how does the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction depend on temperature? G equals H minus Ts by definition. At a given temperature, we have Gibbs energy of reaction equals enthalpy of reaction minus temperature times entropy of the reaction. More specifically, when all chemicals in the reaction are at their corresponding standard state, we have this standard Gibbs energy of reaction at temperature T equals the standard enthalpy of reaction at temperature T minus the reaction temperature times the standard entropy of the reaction. Therefore, at two different temperatures, T1 and T2, we can use this equation twice, once for T1 temperature, once for the T2 temperature. And if we divide both sides by temperature, we have this standard Gibbs energy of reaction divided by T1 equals standard enthalpy of reaction divided by T1 minus the standard entropy of the reaction at temperature T1. At temperature T2, we have a similar reaction. Now, we will prove this enthalpy of reaction at T1 is roughly the same as the enthalpy of the reaction at T2 and the same for entropy. So basically, we will prove this part is approximately the same as this part. And this part is approximately the same as this part. And then we can do a division between these two equations to simplify the result. For a, re a chemical reaction system, the enthalpy of a reaction at temperature 2 equals the enthalpy of the reaction at temperature 1 plus a correction. The correction is the integral of <coughs> the change of the CPM, molar heat capacity. So this is the CPM of the products minus the CPM of the reactants. Uh, typically, delta CPM is slightly depend, uh, dependent on temperature. And then we need to integrate this from temperature 1 to temperature 2. However, this integral is usually much smaller than delta H. Uh, typically, this term is uh, um, no more than 10 kilojoule per mole, and this term is roughly hundreds or even thousands of kilojoule per mole. Therefore, we can safely neglect this term, and uh, we have this enthalpy of reaction at temperature 1 is appro approximately same as the enthalpy of reaction at temperature 2. Uh, essentially, the enthalpy of reaction is independent of temperature as long as the temperature change is not too significant. Similarly, we have the entropy of the reaction at temperature 2 approximately equal to the entropy of the reaction at temperature 1. Therefore, we get back to these two equations. These two are about the same. These two are about the same. So we take the difference. We have the Gibbs energy of reaction at temperature 2 divided by temperature 2 minus the Gibbs energy of the reaction at temperature 1 divided by temperature 1 is equal to the enthalpy of the reaction times the reciprocal of T2 minus the reciprocal of T1. So you may ask, uh, what about this uh, enthalpy of reaction? What temperature should we use? It should not matter. The enthalpy of the reaction is um, uh, roughly, approximately independent of the reaction temperature. Again, this is because the integral of this delta CPM is typically much smaller than the enthalpy of reaction. All right, once we have this, and we have the equation that connects the Gibbs energy of reaction and the equilibrium constant, uh, delta G of reaction, when all chemicals are in the standard state, is equal to negative RT times the natural logarithm of KEQ. So we use this equation for T2 and the same equation for T1. And we plug in these two equations to this one. And we see that um, the T2 here and this T2 cancel, this T1 and this T1 cancel. And then we divide both sides by negative r. So over here, we get the natural logarithm of the equilibrium constant at temperature 2 minus the logarithm 
of the equilibrium constant at temperature 1 equals negative delta h of r in the standard state divided by r times over here the reciprocal of t2 minus the reciprocal of t1. So the logarithm of the ratio between the equilibrium constants at t2 versus t1 is equal to negative standard enthalpy of reaction divided by r times the reciprocal of t2 minus the reciprocal of t1. For endothermic reactions, delta H of r is positive, so this part is positive. When t2 is greater than t1, uh, this part is negative. There's another negative sign. Therefore, overall, this logarithm is positive. That means the KEQ at higher temperature is greater than KEQ at a lower temperature for endothermic reactions. Vice versa for exothermic reactions.